Hello and welcome to Computer Class. My name is Dave and today we're talking about the Home tab in Microsoft Excel. So get yourself an Excel spreadsheet and we will get started. As you can see, if you are clicked into the any any spot other than the actual sheet that you're on, the worksheet, then Excel's features on the Home tab are pretty grayed out. Notice there's nothing here. Um, but the moment I click an active cell or highlight a group of cells, a lot more options become available. I'm going to start over here in the clipboard, clipboard area. And notice it's uh, it's got this paste feature, which is kind of cool. But I would recommend using the copy feature first. Here we can copy it as a picture, which is helpful. That's kind of cool. But you could also copy, um, let me just copy Monday, for instance. Copy, move it down here, and hit paste. And there you can move things. All right. Um, I think a, a better feature than that even is if you want to move data, cutting in Excel is very powerful and probably the most helpful feature. So you hit the cut button. This is going to disappear and move to wherever I put it. I'm just going to highlight here and hit the paste button. And notice it moves it down there, which is very helpful. The data has to be moved around constantly in Excel. And maybe you want to format it, put it a certain way or whatever. That's how you would do that. Another feature could be, if I click this green one here, uh, this format painter, which copies everything about the cell, and then I can paste it onto any one of these cells. And notice the formatting changes completely um, for that cell, and it takes on the look and feel of it. If you've done a lot of work, like made this cell bold and italics, and then you want to copy that because you don't want to click those two things for anything else, it just is a good way to transfer that ability. Okay. Next, we have the font options. If I highlight these and I want to change the font to some other random font, I can. Um, or if I want to change the sizes, I can also do that. That's going to make it too big. I'm not going to do that. Um, let me just go back. All right. Uh, another feature that could be useful, let me highlight these again, is if you wanted to put a border, and I'm not going to do all of them, but maybe a thick border on the bottom. And there you go. Now there's actually a border at the top of our uh, spreadsheet. And when we print that out, you can see that it's actually a pretty, pretty cool thing. You, you could, you could put this around every single cell if you wanted to. You could also do all borders. There we go. Now everything has black borders around it. Maybe that makes things a little bit more visible for you. I don't know. You can also change the color of a cell here. I can change that to orange if I want to, or you could change the color of text like to maybe highlight something specific. We've got bold, italics, underline, obviously um, making things bigger and smaller. Um, when it comes to centering text, you can, you can center things, move them around inside the cell. Um, this has to do with, this, with the height at where they are. If this cell was a little bit wider, you'd be able to see it. Um, there we go. Now if I see how it's moving around top, center, mid, depends on if you have a lot of data in there in that cell. I'm going to go back and, and undo that because I don't want to do that. Or even pushing something in. You can change the direction of text. Like, let's say I move this down, highlight all of these cells, and I wanted this to be angled. Okay, That could be kind of a cool look for something. I'm going to leave it like that. That looks pretty cool. Um, wrapping text. Here we have an example of the small, uh, extra small t-shirts goes off of the uh, cell there, I could hit wrap text and it just creates on on lots of these here, extra large, I could wrap that text as well. Daily total, maybe I need to wrap that. Depending on what you're going for, that could be helpful. Merge and center, we've already kind of discussed that, but if you want two cells to merge together, um, you just click and hit merge and center. And there's some other options here like unmerge in case you accidentally did it. I'm gonna unmerge that because I don't need it. Then we've got uh, the formatting of a specific cell. Here I'll click 76, and, and you've got several options. You can format it as a currency. You can format it as a date. Uh, you can format it as a percentage, as a fraction, maybe a scientific thing. Here I'll do this one as a currency so you can see. Now it's $76. And now I can also, um, you, can, you can add the dollar sign to any or any currency to any cell. Um, you can put percentages. Now I can move this forward or backwards, the decimal place, and there it's just 76. That's pretty cool. I'm going to go back and get rid of that because that's not what I'm going for. 
We've got a cool feature called conditional formatting. It's really helpful though to, if you're going to use conditional formatting to highlight some data. I'm going to highlight all this and I click conditional formatting. And what you can basically do is apply a rule to a group of cells or even a single cell that if this is true, this should happen. And there's many ways to do it. Um, there is, uh, you can do gradients or so, so you can see how far uh, the cells are full, okay, um, based on the number that's the largest right there. There's gradient fills, there's solid fills. Here we've got um, different data types. It's displaying it based on uh, number, icon sets, green arrows, uh, shapes. It's pretty cool. All conditional formatting rules you could apply. Let me just create an interesting rule you, you might not have thought of. Um, cells that contain, and I'm going to change this to equal to, cells that contain 45. Let's just say I wanted to, and I'm going to click format here, change the fill to red. Okay, so now any cell that's 45 in this spreadsheet, which I know I have a couple, are going to be red. I'm going to click OK. Notice a couple cells show up as red. Well, maybe that's a bad thing, and that's why I made it red. So it's kind of helpful to be able to use conditional formatting. Maybe you want to conditionally format so that every other row in your spreadsheet is a gray color or something like that. Whatever. It can be used for many different things, and it has a ton of capabilities. It's very high-powered. Um, so anyway... I'm going to click in number C here. Um, I can format this uh, table. Sorry, not clicking letter C. I'm going to highlight the table. I can format the table as any specific layout here. Um, so like if I don't want something I have here, I could click that. And there it changes it to a more uh, beautified looking spreadsheet. I don't want to do that, but if you wanted to do it, you can. You can format your table, any of these styles. Cell styles, uh, you can give different good, bad, neutral, there's different um, pre-done color choices for you. If you want to insert a row, here if I click a specific row, it says insert and it tells me which direction it's going to. I can also do uh, insert a sheet, I can insert columns, I can insert a specific cell if I want to. If I just press that, notice it gives me another cell. I don't know why I'd need to do that, so I'm going to undo it. I can also delete um, a cell, a column, a sheet, I'm going to delete this column right here. Again, it's based on what you have selected. If you do it this direction, it uh, is going to change. See, it's now a row. Columns are this direction. Rows are this direction. Based on what you click, it will delete certain things. Um, and then, of course, you can format lots of things as well. You can format the row height for your, for your spreadsheet. Um, you can rename the sheet. You can change the default width. Uh, you can protect the spreadsheet with a password. You can format the cells. Lots of different options in formatting. I'm going to go to this auto sum feature. Um, I'm going to delete this number right here. okay? And I'm going to highlight this entire table. And I'm going to hit auto sum. And what it's going to do is it's going to add up everything in here. You notice the little formula. B10 through G10. B10 through G10. It's highlighting this bottom part here because it knows that these are the sum of all the daily averages there, and it's adding them all together. That's pretty cool. It's an auto sum feature. Oops. Um, I'm going to get out of that by hitting escape. Um, so you can auto fill things, and that, that can make it really helpful. I could auto fill, I could auto sum this as well, and there it would select the data going that way. I'm going to hit control Z and escape out of that. And so this auto sum feature can be helpful. You can do average count numbers, min, max. It's got several of the most typical used um, formulas there. Fill is, you can fill uh, right, down, up, left. Here, if I hit um, to the right of this cell, it will just fill it in for me. It'll do things automatically. I'm going to hit fill to the right. And notice it fills 23 was on this side, and now it's over there. So that changes my numbers a little bit. If you're writing the same number over and over again, it might be helpful to do this. If not, things in a series, in other words. You can clear all formatting. I could hit clear all, and there that will clear everything out of that cell. The sorting features, if I just select a specific um, row here, I could highlight data or I could select an entire um, column, I should say. I can sort largest to smallest and continue with the current selection, and there it will sort them largest to smallest. 
if I wanted to sort the other direction, you could do it. You can do a custom sort, a filter, and that will um, put on this feature right here where you have it filtered. Okay, I'm going to hit Control-Z. I don't want to do that. You can find and replace something. Say I wanted to find um, all the 45s and replace them with 34 and hit Replace All. Of course, there's none in the selection, so i got to make sure I've selected everything correctly here. Find and replace. 45, replace with 34. Replace all. And there we go. Nine replacements were made. So that's pretty helpful. The last tab here is an Analyze Data tab. It's kind of cool because it takes the current selection, whatever you have selected, and it analyzes it, and it tries to make a chart or some sort of helpful layout as to what you could do with the information. There's 14 results here. It goes on and on. Maybe I want to use this chart. I could click Insert Chart, and there we go. It, it makes a chart for me. Let me zoom out a little bit. Based on the data that I have, and maybe that'll help illustrate your document a little better. I'm going to close that down now that I've done it. All right. So there's the Home tab, and it's an incredibly useful tab has a lot of features that you will use very regularly. Hopefully you've learned something today and you've liked the video and subscribed to the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next video.